When Buddhism came into China in the first century AD, it met with Confucianism and Taoism, which had both been widespread since the fifth century BC. Taoism, as opposed to Confucianism, was the great popular religion of China. Confucianism was the official state religion only from the time of the Han Dynasty, under which the country became unified in 213 BC. But sweeping distinctions should be avoided. The Confucian bureaucracy could turn to Taoist spiritual practices once their daily work was finished and be Confucian by day and Taoist by night. Buddhism first spread under the guise of Taoism. It is true that Taoism and Buddhism have fundamentally opposing aims, in that Taoism seeks the salvation of the individual, and Buddhism, in contrast, seeks an escape from the cycle of personal existence. But certain practices were very similar, meditation, fasting, breathing techniques. The Chinese thought that the Buddhism which came from India was just a slightly more exotic form of Taoism. Just like Confucianism, Taoism began as a school of philosophy. The word Tao means both the order and totality of the universe, and the pathway or road which allows the individual to enter into the rhythm of the world through a negation of self. The pathway went beyond creation to primordial chaos, a vast matrix which contained energies in a diffused state, winds which gave birth to 10,000 things when they broke away. This concept of the universe does not recognize it as the work of a creator. It is seen as a spontaneous result of perpetual change. The action of Tao frees the energies trapped within initial chaos and unites and unleashes the life force. Two opposing but complementary forces of reality are fused in the Tao. Yin, which is passive, cold and feminine, and Yang, which is active, hot and masculine. The moon and the sun are the manifestations par excellence of the two. All change is a result of these two dynamic forces. Day and night, the seasons, life and death. When yin attains its height, it becomes yang and vice versa. These two principles alternate in the five phases of a cycle, which are represented by water, fire, wood, metal and earth. Water is the perfect yin, fire the perfect yang. Metal is the nascent yin, wood the nascent yang, and earth unites all four other elements. These five agents serve to define the five cardinal points, north, south, east, west, and the center, and also serve to classify the organs of the body, which is considered as if it were a country. This view of the cosmos pervades all Chinese thought, has influenced medical science as well as acupuncture. The origins of Taoism are obscure. According to tradition, its founder in the 6th century BC was Lao Tzu, a name which means old master. This would make Lao Tzu a contemporary of Confucius, and to some extent his rival. Lao Tzu's teachings, which were passed on by word of mouth at first, were gathered together in the 5th century into a collection called the Tao Da Jing, or the Book of the Path and its Action, divided a century later into 24 short chapters, which contain no names or dates, but which concentrate on reflecting the essence of Taoist thought. The wise man does not seek to be known as a wise man, but of his own free will remains in obscurity. Those who seek erudition enrich themselves daily. Those who seek Tao become poorer each day. They become poorer and poorer until they are not capable of action. Without action, nothing can be achieved. The second great work of Taoism is the Zhuang Zi, the book of the master Zhuang, attributed to an impoverished scholar who was a nonconformist and lived in northern China in the 4th century or the 3rd century BC. Zhuang Zi was a great Chinese literary and philosophical work 
which subsequently influenced all philosophers and all the religions in the country. It teaches that the world is the result of a flowing together of semblances, and that the only real truth is Tao, which brings together all superficial conflicts and contradictions. The god of the sea said, there is nothing in the world of water which is wider than the sea. All watercourses constantly flow into it, and the sea does not overflow. It takes no heed of the rainy season or of the dry season. Its immensity has never inspired pride in me. Since if I compare my size with that of the cosmos, and if I consider that I receive my breath from the yin and the yang, I am but a small pebble or a small tree on a huge mountain.